gorgeous evening in Seattle, and we are getting set for some Pac-12 volleyball on the University of Washington campus. It's the Pac-12 Big Ten Challenge, and we are inside Alaska Airlines Arena for the second match of the day. Illinois beat Colorado earlier, and now the 13th ranked Washington Huskies taking on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Anne Marie Anderson, alongside three-time Olympian Holly McPeak. And the Huskies graduated a lot of talent. Amongst them, Tia Scambray and Courtney Schwant, their primary passers. What does that mean for the Huskies this year? We're going to see lots of new faces. That's what the first thing it means. But they also lost two key passers. So passing is a big question mark. New players are going to be in that role. And that's the whole first contact that initiates that offense. Yeah, and the second contact's pretty critical, too. Bailey Tanner graduated but they have a freshman who's very exciting they certainly do Ella Mae Powell out of Arkansas Keegan Cook's really excited about her the first recruit that he's really brought in as a setter and he has high expectations for her. think she's something special her volleyball IQ unlike any others he's seen at this age well, LMA Powell has big shoes to fill, and they're going to be playing the Big Ten team, Iowa Hawkeyes, led by Bree Orr. Bree Orr is in her second year, so she's got that one year under her belt. She knows what the expectations, what her responsibilities are. I think her role is even bigger this year because lots of new faces on the floor, so she needs to put them in good, consistent locations in order for her Iowa team to score. The Huskies are young. They have just one senior in Destiny July. The new look Washington Huskies hosting the Iowa Hawkeyes for a serve coming up on the other side of this break. Huskies will serve first. Shannon Crenshaw back to serve. Six foot two, true freshman out of Longwood, Florida. Get those jitters out. Shannon Crenshaw, big time background junior national championship, named MVP for club. Really nice high level of club experience behind her. They're testing her with the very first serve. Nice up by Johnston, but the kill on the outside in Badgeman. And Crenshaw delivers a very nice pass. Washington able to stay in system to Badgeman. A.V. Nice up front. Lauren Sanders in the back, serving the middle blockers for the Huskies. Free ball. Kaylin Onasco. That ball blocked by Taylor Lewis, the player we talked about, number 16 in black, who we expect to see get a lot of sets tonight for Iowa. Onasco passes the sec the serve. Woo, heavy hand from Cara Badgema. And that's one of the things Keegan Cook, the head coach for Washington, talked about. Cara Badgema is now hitting with more range. She worked hard in the spring, but it really showed up in the preseason when she came to camp. All those new, improved skills. First ball right here. Swing off the top of the net. Here comes Destiny July. One of the best arms on the team. And I'm so glad we get to see Destiny July in that beautiful arm swing. Washington using her to score points on the right. Look at this quick arm down the line. Taylor Lewis taking a lot of swings already for the Hawkeyes. LMA Powell outside the badge match. She knows where her bread is buttered. She certainly does, but nice cover play. Washington goes right back at them. Big push by freshman setter Ella Mae Powell for the kill. Powell serving. They're making Taylor Lewis handle everything right now. 
just a little while. You and I sat in on the Washington film session when we learned a lot about how Washington to, likes to attack teams. They go through each lineup. They know what the teams like to run offensively and where they want to attack with the serve. Yeah, and it's a very interactive film session. And you better know your stuff because Coach Keegan Cook will call on you and ask questions, and they are very involved and invested. It's a lot of fun to sit in a film session. It certainly is, and your name can be called at any time. A.V. Nice went down in the middle of that rally. I don't know if she rolled her ankle, got up a little gingerly, and is asking to come out. So nice is going out, and in comes Marin Grote. Grote out of Burbank, California. And a mature decision by A.V. Nice to say, you know what, I'm gonna take a minute, make sure I'm okay, let somebody else have the opportunity. Top spin serve from Megan Bezzario. And then the dig from Bezzario. Beautiful up by Kelly the Libro for Iowa. And power from Callie Hoyle pushes through the block. Callie Hoyle. Able to swing past Karabajma a little bit late on her block press, and that one sneaks through for the Iowa point. <laughs> LMA Powell getting to meet the fans. Iowa wants. Iowa wants to challenge Karabajma in this new passing role. You, if you're looking at A.B. Nice there in the middle, keep an eye on her right foot. She lands on an Iowa player. Smart decision to make sure she gets checked, make sure she's okay, but she has big ankle braces on. Great defense by the Hawkeyes, and then they answer back. It's Hoy again. Callie Hoy loves to hit the line, and according to her coach, she hits the line better than anybody. An area they feel like they can exploit against Washington. Bazzario again. There's a sister pair for Iowa. Courtney Bazzario, who you will see, number two, coming in. She's a setter and an opposite. But that was Megan Bazzario. And there's A.B. Nice on the bench, leg up. Getting taped. And what a different look this is for the Huskies to have seven players graduated. Uh, your primary passers, your Libro, your setter, your outside hitters. I, I mean, it's really something. Well, if you look at the court right now, three new faces on the court now. Now just two, but lots of big roles, different adjustments in terms of position. Some big challenges for the Huskies. Shane McPherson serves. A use off the net. Rigged coil number eight, very effective on the opposite. She came in as a walk on and worked hard, earned a scholarship, and has been a big contributor for Iowa. Outside. Good swing by Drexel. Samantha Drexel, a transfer from Maryland. The first time we saw her was during the beach season. She contributed and played for Washington on the beach volleyball side. Now she's getting to play on the left side. For Maryland, she played on the right side. Well, and Destiny July serving. When we get back to talking about beach, we'll mention July and McPherson and the rest of this team, too, because they were ter pretty terrific in the sand. Three ball opportunity for the Hawkeyes. But the Hawkeyes change the conversation. Another kill for Hoy. That's her third. Callie Hoy has been hot for Iowa. Washington unable to stop her. And here's Courtney Bazzario coming in for Iowa. One of the tallest setters in the country. 
She is at the net to provide some length defensively at six foot five. Also in is Kaylin Onasco for Washington. Blocked by Taylor Lewis going over and grabbing the ball. That ball out. And they are caught in the touch, and so it is Huskies ball. That ball hit sharp away from the big block of Bazzario. So Courtney Bazzario and Amaya Jones, two true freshmen next to each other up front for Iowa. Taylor Lewis, senior, directing traffic up there right now. Holly, let's talk about the luxury that it gives you to have uh, Courtney Bazzario come in for the rotations five and six and be up front. Well, not only does it provide a backup setter, which they didn't have last year, but it provides length at the net. Somebody who can attack on two, somebody at six, five. That's a big block trying to shut down the big guns for Washington on the left side. Back again, Sanders off one foot. That's something that Lauren Sanders has really worked on, becoming a better slide hitter. Here you see her go up and down, around the block, down the line. Outside Lewis. It's a nice pass to start things off for the Hawkeyes. And now Badgham on the way back. Block comes right at her. LMA Powell just looks calm in her delivery. How about that? Iowa's block really making a difference. Hannah Clayton and Courtney Bazzario just shutting it down. That time Hannah Clayton, the middle, gets most of it. Second block of the set for Iowa. They hold a one-point lead over the Huskies. Head coach for Iowa talked about Courtney Bazzario and her tough serve at six foot five. He wants to keep her in there to serve because she's got a tough serve, gets Washington out of system, and then their block takes over. Service is long. And with that, Courtney Bazzario will go out and Bree Orr re enters. Bree Orr. The lone setter last year on this team, as you had mentioned, brings a lot of confidence and experience, according to Bon Shemansky. She's another national champion as a junior player. July. Off the block, there's a lot of action happening right up front. Shane McPherson always making it a better touch. How about that? I love the defense from Iowa. And they've got three arms who can terminate and score, and they're using them. Work around their weaknesses and their inexperienced players. But Taylor Lewis elevates and finishes that long rally for Iowa. Yeah, Callie Hoyles, Hoy has had eight swings, Lewis five, Reagan two. One on one isolation to Destiny July on the left side, able to tool the block for Washington. There's just so much to say and appreciate about Destiny July from her freshman year when Courtney Schwan injured herself on this floor and July stepped in. She has just made it impossible to take her off the floor. A.V. Neese gets taped up, inserted back into the lineup. Huge block. She had a great blocking weekend against San Diego. And watch her great close and press over. And Keegan Cook is holding the green challenge card in his hand, having a discussion. There is a challenge. Tied up at 13 apiece. We're waiting to 
receive information on what the challenge is. So Holly, take us through the challenge review system. So basically, reviewable plays are the ball is in or out, the ball contacting a player, net faults, service foot faults, and attack line faults. Right, the attack line uh, football, the takeoff is new this year to see whether or not. And the reason why we're confused is we thought it was a Washington point. We do not know what the challenge is. We're waiting to receive word from the table. So until we get information, we don't want to guess. We'll wait to receive information and pass it on to you. told whether or not there's a touch on the net, but we don't know which player they're saying, maybe A.B. Neese, is that the idea? If you watch that replay, it looks like A.B. Neese might have got some net on the right hand. So there was a net call to review, they decided that that was the right call. Let's watch A.V. Neese, the middle blocker. You see some net contact. Looks like her right hand or forearm on the press. I did not see that the yeah. first time around. Maybe it was the left. It's hard to tell from so far. In any event, call confirmed. Hannah Clayton. July to the back line. Out of system kill. Destiny July is cool as a cucumber. Nobody wants to hit that out of system ball. And she just elevates, waits for it, puts it in a perfect spot. Another solid swing from Hoy. The block of Iowa is devastating. That's their fourth block in 15 points. Pretty impressive. Amaya oh, Jones, number nine right there, anchoring the middle for Iowa. Iowa with a lead over Washington in set number one. If now the time is reduced, that is kind of negated as well. I agree. It used to be 10 minutes, and you could see a whole different match after that intermission break. It will be interesting to see if that is a factor. Washington strikes first in set number one. Holly, when it was going well for Washington, what went right? I felt like they have three hitters that are doing pretty well. Samantha Drexel, Destiny July, and Lauren Sanders. Cara Bajma hasn't really gotten anything going offensively. And she's got the big arm. She was good in the first set, but in the second set, it was a bunch of other players. So more offensive balance. And on the other side for Iowa, when things have been going well, a lot of it has been Taylor Lewis, of course. What else? Taylor Lewis offensively, but also Regan Cole and uh, Callie Hoy. But the, it was the scrappy defense, the little plays that made a big difference for Iowa. And that block early on, especially in set number one for Iowa, was uh, controlling the match. And Callie Hoy finds her ninth kill. She has been so good. I love her confidence. You know when she's going up to hit the ball, she's going to find a way to put it down. There's seven Big Ten teams in the top 25. The competition is so tough in both of these conferences. Woo, that is some heat from Hoy. Callie Hoy out of the back row, her 10th kill. She is on fire for Iowa. Goes right around the block and downtown for the kill.
Molly Kelly serving. Not making it easy on the freshman, LMA Powell. Sometimes everything you touch is gold. Taylor Lewis able to get that little roll shot. She reached up, made good hand contact. But if you're Washington, you cannot let that ball drop defensively. You knew she was in trouble. Need to be ready to run that ball down. I mean, LMA Powell is having to pat, or having to set off 25 feet off the net, it feels like, every time. And, and that's a tough way to have to run an offense, but Destiny July is a nice target. She's able to get another kill off the block. And there's a challenge from Bond Shemansky for Iowa. I believe I was arguing that the ball hit the antenna before it went into the block. Ooh. Hmm. One more time. Yeah, let's Did take a look at it again. More time. That was not near the antenna. The other angle, perhaps, because. I don't think that hit the antenna. I don't because think it was anywhere the near. Other angle, it was more inside. Right. It was. It wasn't at all on the antenna. They're yeah, saying like the net angle. violation is the question. Is what our producer is telling July, us. Destiny July not close to the net, and it was Washington's ball, anyways. They're looking. Right. Iowa arguing that it hit the antenna, but I do not think it did. And so uh, the call stands. And it really just slowed things down. Yeah. Right? Never bad. Bon Shemansky, a graduate of Iowa. He is Hawkeye Nation through and through, he said to us. Shane McPherson in. Destiny July puts it away. Beautiful transition play, and Destiny July looks so confident, hitting on both pins, just taking some smart swings for Washington. Backcourt. Pass is perfect. Block has returned for the Hawkeyes. Bree Orr sets up that block, and Hannah Clayton with the assist. Defensively at the net, Iowa now up by two in this third set. Taylor Lewis way over the net, waiting for Destiny July. I think Destiny July needs a little bit of a lift in that set in order to go over the block or around. Just long. Lauren Sanders going for that deep corner out of the middle, misses by an inch. I like the idea going deep. Again, the passes from Washington are keeping them out of system. Backcourt. Husky's caught, caught a break there. Molly Kelly just sitting in that sharp angle, digging Washington and giving Iowa some transition swing opportunities. You see the fire from her. She is feisty. From West Liberty, Iowa, a captain for this team. Dad was a wrestler for Iowa. Ba-boom! How about that kill? Big arm out of the middle. Hannah Clayton turns it back. Actually, that was Regan Cole. The double quick, and she gets the second part of it.
Laid out on Nasco. Backcourt. And Bajima answers with a backcourt of her own. Cara Bajima with her sixth kill. Her offensive numbers are low, but she stepped into a big role where she has to pass six rotations. That's a lot of pressure on Cara Bajima. This time, big kill out of the back row. We had a good angle of that, and you see the big press by Ella May Powell with her hand. She just sealed that net. Nowhere for Iowa to go. Look at that press. I know that press makes you happy. We talk about it a lot. It's that last bit of effort. It is, and a lot of blockers like to go high, but the press is the most important move on the block. Even if you're small, pressing and cutting out those angles is key. Service error answered with another service error. And one of the things that Keegan Cook talked with us about with LMA Powell, the Husky setter, was that out of Arkansas, he's really impressed with, it caught him off guard that she can have detailed conversations with him just so early in her career about strategies and tactics. A maturity she has. Wow, Reagan Cole, number eight, just firing on the right side, and Washington unable to stop her with that big block on the left side. Powell in system runs the middle. Nice pick up and back to Bajima. Kelly Dig. Big defensive battle, both sides of the net. I love it. Both teams working so hard that time. Cara Bajima gets her feet to the ball, goes high, throws it down in the middle of the court. That's all she had left. <laughs> Elmay Powell serving. Side to Bajima. And it's a net violation against the Huskies. Car Bajima trying to get to that set, could not do it, hits the net in the follow through. Ball just drifting kind of tight and wide and trying to save it, hits the net with her hand. July. Good swing, Molly Kelly again picks it up. Cross court power. July finds a sweet spot. Destiny July, we've seen her power, but that time the little tip to the middle of the court over the big block, six foot five, Courtney Bazario in there to block. Front court setter for Iowa. And another service error. Hannah Clayton re-entering for Iowa as Molly Kelly, another original walk-on, as we mentioned, now on scholarship, serves long. Wow, it has been error after error after both teams back and forth. Everyone's going for it, really trying to put that pop on it and get the other team in trouble. Most, well, most yeah. of the scoring runs have been anchored by tough serving. Destiny July started it in the second set for Washington. 
Great block cover by Iowa. Ball outside the antenna. Tough serve by Shane McPherson. Gives an opportunity to the Huskies to run their middle. Boom, Lawrence Sanders just delivers the heat out of the middle. Ellen Bay Powell and Lawrence Sanders have a nice connection. Vaughn Shemansky is challenging whether that ball is in or out. While he is challenging in or out, they get a moment to talk with their players, tied up at 12 apiece. The pivotal set. On the match, Washington numbers creeping up offensively, now hitting 185, but Iowa still with the advantage, 294. Hard to tell from that angle. From that angle, tough, but looks like it might have got a piece of that white line. Easier in the sand, isn't it, Holly? Yeah, <laughs> the ball leaves that nice divot. Well, so the call can stand, it can be reversed, but if there isn't video evidence, it's inconclusive, and then Correct. the call stands because it's inconclusive. So you have to take that into consideration, too. And that's the thing, if you don't have a good angle to see it, it's tough. Right now she's asking, it looks like, for another angle. Challenges added to the game last year across the country, and the fifth one, and the takeoff of the three-meter line of the backcourt attack added this year as the fifth thing to challenge. But if those are the only angles available, then it's inconclusive and the call stands as called, and that is the case in this situation. Shane McPherson serving. Elmay Powell goes back to the middle again. This one is out. Good defensive play by Washington. Opportunity to score. Lauren Sanders just not getting on top of that ball. And the Iowa block really forcing her to cut that ball back offensively. Courtney Bazzario serving. And another service error for Iowa. I mean, it's really tough when you try to walk that line between the two. Some coaches, for example, John Sparov, the men's team at UCLA, says, I don't care at all about service errors. Even after the national championship match, people, somebody asked me, he said, and I certainly don't care today. Other coaches want to see those numbers be closer to one to one. Unfortunate missed opportunity for Washington. If you're the setter, you need to command that ball. LMA Powell needs to go or yell help for everybody else to step up and help. Iowa has one service ace and 10 service errors, but they have kept Washington out of system quite a bit, especially in that first set. Tough serve there. Backcourt, Cara Bajma. Bajma again, adding more and more power. Molly Kelly says no problem. Wow. That time, Megan Bazzario out of the back row. Number five finally gets it to drop. A backcourt battle between she and Cara Bajima. Midway through the third set, Iowa with a slim lead at 15-13 over Washington. Hit her on the outside. Megan Bazzario, tough serve. And again, uh, Reagan.
Megan Coyle, Iowa's getting nice production, Holly, from a number of different people. But as you said, there's really three main people that they have been unable to stop. Megan Coyle, Taylor Lewis, and Callie Hoy have been hot for sure. Receiving by far more sets than anyone else. And the service, are they hitting errors for Washington are starting to hurt them. Yeah, Karabajma again out of the back row, just missing that ball long. Set number three, tied up at one apiece. Misconnection, so four touches. Washington point. We have not seen one of those all night for Iowa. No, especially off of Reed Orr, who was their starting setter last year as a freshman. No net touch there for Orr. She danced around that net. She certainly did. Beautiful set by Bree Orr, number seven, to keep that ball alive and hittable for the Iowa kill. A use of the block. Jones and Coyle. Cara Bajima that time elevating, finding a way to get a kill in the front row for Washington. And Washington down by two in this third set. Iowa out of system. Callie Hoy has been so good all night long, but that time she cranks a little bit wide out of bounds. <laughs> Lauren Sanders coming back in for the Huskies. Continues to serve that ball long. They're in a good position to steal this third set. And Washington hanging around just based on those missed serves from Iowa. Yeah, I mean, we'll get a chance to ask Bon Shemansky later where his tolerance is for that because that's a lot of missed serves uh, without accompanying errors. I mean, accompanying aces, excuse me. Shailen Crenshaw delivers that free ball pass just right to her setter. Jason Mansfield, first year assistant coach from Washington, likes it a lot. Outside. Ooh, hands a free ball back. Amaya Jones ready for it. And Bree Orr fired up and taking control for the Hawkeyes. Calls her own number, very aggressive. Two balls attacking for Bree Orr and Iowa. There's been five Hawkeye service errors in this set. That's five of Washington's 19 points. Bajima gets that kill from the right side. Washington ties it up, 20 all in this third set. Doug by McPherson, 
Going back instead, and what a put away from Drexel. That was a big point. Washington has been scoring at a much higher clip from the right side, and they always like to use that right side. It's a fastball to the pin. Usually a lot of space between the two blockers to swing. Iowa was leading 18-16. Before Washington came back now, taking the lead. How about freshman Courtney Bazzario in there for the big block? And she delivers. Trading blows back and forth. That time Drexel wins it, hammering through the block of Azario. A little quicker push over the net and she can block that. Shane McPherson serving. Washington one point lead as we near the end of set number three. Oh boy, yeah, nice strength by Molly Kelly. Fun when you have a Libro that can hand set the ball and get your hitter a hittable ball when you're out of system. Such an important skill. After Annika Olsen led the Big Ten in digs per set last year, Molly Kelly worked her way into this Libro position. Senior, she's been waiting for this moment. And another put away. Iowa takes the lead. Impressive. Callie Hoy out of the back row for that kill. Molly Kelly puts that ball up in the pipe. Kill away from Shane McPherson. Pretty impressive by Hoy. Well, we're going to remind you more volleyball tomorrow right here at Alaska Airlines Arena. 8 o'clock Pacific time, Illinois faces this 13th ranked Washington team. We just talked about Jason Mansfield a little bit ago. He was the assistant at Illinois, now the assistant at Washington. You can watch that game 8 o'clock on Pac-12 Washington or download and watch on Pac-12 now. Earlier today, Illinois with a sweep over 21st ranked Colorado. Illinois' Jacqueline Quay did not disappoint. And Illinois was amazing defensively at the net with 12 blocks. Justine Spann on the left side for Colorado, 10 kills and six digs. Yeah, we're talking about a Colorado team that has historically been a very good passing team. Illinois, six aces there. So Jason Mansfield, the Washington assistant coach, is going to be relied upon to uh, provide some detailed insight. It's almost like he doesn't want to be identified right now with the tape <laughs> behind the tape. And uh, Chris Thomas, the head coach of Illinois, scouting this match, his second season as Illinois head coach. He took over when Kevin Hambly left. Hambly is the head coach at Stanford now. Jason Mansfield it used to be an assistant so for, for a long time. Yeah, so get the full circle there. Certainly. And uh, when he was in the Bay Area, Jason Mansfield as the assistant coach for Stanford, he coached a lot against Keegan Cook, who was at St. Mary's. So as an assistant coach and they coached yeah. against each other a lot at the club level. And Keegan always prided himself if he could his team could take a game off of Jason Mansfield's team. So I like that. Lots of mutual respect for one another. Yep. A very small world. We can do all of that in a flow chart for you or maybe a Venn diagram if people want later on. But Jason Mansfield is the Kevin Bacon of volleyball. Six degrees of separation. Destiny July serving. Taylor Lewis shut down. Lauren Sanders is doing a much better job, number one in white, closing that scene for Washington. That's where Taylor Lewis was having success earlier in this match. Lauren Sanders closing that seam, working for the Washington block. Set point. 
point for Washington in the pivotal set. It's tied up one apiece, Holly, for Washington. What's kind of allowed them to turn the tide a little bit? I feel like they're blocking a lot better in this third set. They've actually trailed most of the third set, but right at the end, they made this push. And I feel like Iowa missing so many serves really let Washington back in this third set. Yeah, both teams otherwise in this set fairly even both have seven attack errors, both have two blocks. So as you said, it's really those service errors. And anytime Washington as a team can get five extra points off missed serves, that's gonna only help them inch closer to that 25 number. And they give you an idea, it's 12 overall missed serves for Iowa, but five of them in this third set. Still, there's work to be done, and the Hawkeyes have shown that they can side out, tie it up, and the set can flip just like that. For Washington, their best point scoring server is behind the line in Destiny July. Iowa's got three very strong hitters in the front row. And she's gonna go after Taylor Lewis most predictably, at least that's what she's done on all her other serves. She does, Lewis passes it on the money. Huskies take set number three. Samantha Drexel, number nine on the left side, able to get that block, and then Ella May Powell puts it down for Washington. It that can't get any closer. I agree. Watch this tight ball, Ella May Powell aggressive with her hands over the net for the throwdown. She's hitting 333, 30 kills, I mean 30 swings. Molly Kelly with another great dig. McPherson, solid set. Heat from Hoyle. Plant and rip from Taylor Lewis. In that one particular rally, Molly Kelly dug two really good balls overhand, two hard-driven balls. You don't see a lot of players do that. And then she delivered a perfect free ball pass with her hands as well, really pushing the tempo of Iowa's offense. Yeah, very impressed by the Libro of Iowa. Washington able to keep it alive, keep the ball in play, and Iowa makes the unforced air. Tough serve, and it's an ace. We talked about it, or we watched them talk about it in the film session. We just observed, but attacking those seams between the two players. I've been really impressed with the way Iowa has passed the ball so far tonight. Here's Molly Kelly, the Libro, the captain. Former walk-on, now on scholarship. Outside, Drexel in her first year with the Huskies. Drexel, heat to the corner. Washington feeling a lot more comfortable. Just the look on their face. They were so stressed before, looking a lot more comfortable in this fourth set. Service error long. Three or serving now for Iowa. And the serving woes continue. This serve for Iowa, I, I, I'm pointing out both because Shane McPherson for Washington made one prior to that. It was just the difference in the last set for Iowa and the reason, one of the reasons why they lost, in my opinion. Destiny July, serve, and then a reach, is it up? It is. 
Drexel off hands. Lays it out, digs that ball. Ooh. It was interesting because the down ref was pointing at the ground like the ball might have hit the ground. Well, there is a challenge card, but it has not been used. And they're going to move on. Backcourt attack from Bajima. Molly Kelly, I'm loving what we're seeing from Molly Kelly, so strong. The effort level, the balls that are thrown in the middle of the court, three Iowa bodies on the floor to keep that alive. Molly Kelly getting a lot of good touches, but you see three Iowa players fighting for that play, and then Callie Hoy ends it for the Iowa point. And so much emotion from Molly Kelly as well. Lots of fun to watch. I love the energy of Bon Shemansky on the sideline, just positive. <laughs> yeah. He's having a good time. He's pushing his players. And I think when you have that kind of attitude on the bench that rubs off in your players, they're having a good time. Double contact call. Let's see the replay. I'm saying it's a double contact, and Bon Shemansky's argument is that that's the first call of its kind today. I cleaned it up. I mean, he didn't, yeah, need, he didn't need me to clean it up. He was, he was very clean anyway, his argument, but I'm saying that's what the issue is. He summed was. it up. Thank you. Summed it up. Thank you. Figure out what that's what the su summing it up looks like. No, Bon Shemansky was perfectly clean. It summed it up is the right term. Outside. The head. How about that block? Regan Cole way over the net. Coyle, number eight. She has been so impressive on Iowa. Love her press. Look at those hands way over the net. I think it was off shoulder, actually, which is better than off head. Okay. For concentration purposes. Side. That block just reaching over and grabbing at the Hawkeyes. So defensive. Deep corner. Shane McPherson in transition, stepping up, giving Kara Bajima that nice hittable set to the corner. Good high. Kara Bajima does a really good job. That set was a little bit inside, gets her feet there, and finds the deep corner open. Emma Colley. Serving. Never over. Cara Bajma, you know, she's got a lot of responsibility. <laughs> she's going to call Courtney Schwan and Tia Scambray and say, wow, what you guys did for all those years, pretty impressive. Yeah. And Tia Scambray to be an outside hitter, then moved to Libro, then back and forth. She was something special, too. And Schwan, of course, Pac-12 Player of the Year, her junior year. Iowa fighting hard every play, making it hard on Washington. Off the net, A.B. Knees calling for it. Pretty in-system ball to Kara Bajima. Haven't been a lot of easy kills. I'll tell you, Iowa doing a good job blocking Bajima, really keen on her, forcing her to hit that perfect seam between those two defenders. And even that one, she's pulled off and had a decent amount to have to set it. Give me a pass right here, first ball. 
this ace. Well, Ella May Powell really making that right back pass or move towards the line. Nice pace on that serve as well. Nice dig by Ella May Powell. A.B. Nees pulls out the pause. Maya Jones begging for it. Door closed by A.B. Nees in Destiny July. A.B. Nees did a beautiful job closing that block to Destiny July. Closing that seam, it was a little late, but perfect timing. Just in time to close that seam. Backcourt. All the options available. Destiny July's arm swing is a thing of beauty. Just gets up and down, it's nice and high and so efficient. It just looks different than anybody else's. <laughs> it's pretty. She's so efficient. She, I mean, Keegan Cook called her rare in describing her. He said she's so steady, not just on the floor, but in life. And Destiny July just plays as steady and efficient as apparently she is in her entire life. It appears so. You and I got to see her play boots volleyball in the spring. In the level of which she that she played at was so elevated. She just moved. She understood when to get off the net, when to set, when to shoot. I, I was just so impressed by her. Yeah, and, and she didn't grow up playing that sport that way. Keegan Cook says he prefers to watch her play beach. He just enjoys it. Taylor Lewis goes off the block. But Washington doing a better job of closing their block, just getting tooled a little bit right there. Hard delivery. The right side offensive attack spot has been very successful for Washington. Anytime they can, they want to push that right side attack. Caravaggio has been good from there. Destiny July. Good high corner attack. That was not a double called. The set was moving. McPherson back out to Drexel, opposite, in a more natural position. Here comes Destiny July. That wasn't what LMA Powell intended. LMA Powell learning on the job. She's got the talent, just learning to make the right decisions. Von Shemansky earned a yellow card. Well, he, he had a good point that the ball didn't come out very cleanly. Thirteen ten lead for Washington. Service ace. Tara Bajima, nice flat float serve with pace. This is the toughest ball to pass. Catches Kelly Hoy a little bit high. Courtney Bazzario out to Lewis. Beautiful set to the pin and Taylor Lewis so fun to watch. She came in like a freight train. Yeah, there, was, was, there was no stopping her. Well-formed block, forcing her to go sharp angle. Shane McPherson's there, and it's even inside of her. Sometimes that's just hit her credit. Tight 
pass. LMA Powell putting up that quick ball to the pin for Drexel. Only one blocker in front of Drexel. She's able to get that down for Washington. Washington with a four-point lead in set number four. Huskies trying to end the evening for Iowa. the only unranked team in this Pac-12 Big Ten Challenge. Big block by Samantha Drexel and Lauren Sanders. They haven't been able to stop Taylor Lewis very often, but that time just shut the door. And this reminds me of something Keegan Cook was saying to us about kind of a slow start against San Diego and then working it out. And Washington looking much more crisp in this fourth set than they did earlier on. I feel like Washington against Taylor Lewis can slide that block a little bit more, and she likes to go into that hard angle. We haven't seen her hit the ball line once. No, Taylor Lewis has been sharp angle. She's been having success, hitting 333. And yeah, it's always ending landing the same spot. Destiny July, the queen, has requested the ball. We didn't put her on tight enough. Just like that. Good heat, but dug well by Courtney Bazzario. This is fantastic collegiate volleyball. I love the long rallies and the pushes and the strategy. And now the flat hit by Drexel to go high off the hands of the Iowa block to end that really long rally. Taylor Lewis forced or chose to try and go down the line, missing that ball long. It's been working cross court. Went away from it. It's a six point lead for Washington. Von Shemansky calling a timeout. It's interesting because the last set, Iowa led the entire set until 20s. Now, Washington definitely with the advantage in this fourth set. Yeah, when you think back to the first set and you think now, what has really been the change for Iowa? I know I've asked you about Washington. For Iowa, what's been different? Well, gosh, you know, I, I feel like Washington's done a better job defensively. They've really closed up the seams with their blocking, and, and they're forcing Iowa to hit more towards their defenders. So the defense has definitely been an improvement. And for Washington, they picked up their serving, and that puts a lot of pressure. They've had some aces lately. Um, that puts a lot more pressure on Iowa in their offense. Yeah, I mean, these are two of the top conferences in the country in all sports. And when you look at the NCAA titles by conference just last year alone, Pac-12 had an incredible year across all sports. And I feel like that must have been a record. 12 NCAA titles in just one year from all Pac-12 schools. I mean, that's impressive. It was a celebration in the Pac-12 networks. It felt like every week it was, oh, hey, is golf going to do it now? Is beach volleyball going to do it now? Gymnastics. Yeah, it was amazing. And if you look just at the fourth set, eight kills, but the hitting percentage, 0.059. Iowa's been way over 100, mostly over 200. And then you see the stats, only one block in this four set. Washington really turned it around, hitting now 171 when they're mostly under 100 early. Yeah, and the difference is the errors. Uh, Washington's had two attack errors in this set, whereas Iowa has had six. They both, both had about the same number of swings. Big kill out of the middle, Hannah Clayton. 
quick turn. We've talked about the three big hitters from Iowa, but there's some players in the middle who can contribute as well. You see Hannah Clayton there, 6'2 freshman out of Illinois. Megan Bazzario, heat serve, top spin. That looked like Washington volleyball. Lauren Sanders, quick off one foot, isolation, only one blocker in front of her. Lauren Sanders will win that battle most of the time. One of the things that Washington's traditionally known for as a volleyball program is pushing the in-system plates. Even when they're 10 feet off the net, they like to push the speed of the offense. And that last play to Lauren Sanders really demonstrated that. Nasco's pass is on the money. The block of Iowa is closing the door repeatedly. Second swing from Bajama. Lots of cover plays. Iowa stopping the ball, but Washington more disciplined on their coverage and able to get a second attack or a third in some cases. flat hands for the kill and now it's time Iowa needs to make a big push to stay alive in this match yeah this is the moment once Washington reaches 20 here it's very tough to do it more than a 10-5 run especially with the service errors being what they are now Washington four points away from winning this match. Last time Ella Mae Powell was on the service line, she was going hard cross court. Maya Jones trying to come around behind. That's the problem when the pass is off the net. If a setter or a middle attacker is trying to run around and behind, it makes that route much more difficult. And that's one of the reasons why LMA Powell is serving that cross court ball. So the setter has less options. Nice turnaround. Veteran move by Crenshaw. Really nice move defensively by the freshman from Florida, Shannon Crenshaw, for Washington. And then on the other side, Callie Hoy continues to be fantastic on the left side for Iowa. Hoy serving. Washington marches on. Carabajam, a nice flat shot high off the block and that's been really effective lately Drexel using that same swing this is the most veteran front court that Washington has Drexel a transfer from Maryland but AB Nice and Destiny July up front as well July playing on the left another, Drexel on the right another misconnect there haven't been many but this was bad timing for Iowa to have it then. Iowa taking their final timeout as it is match point for Washington. And so we will step away while they talk it over. Will Washington be able to put it away from the service line? Match point when we come back. Taylor Lewis outside the antenna and the Huskies take a hard-fought match over Iowa in four sets. A big win for Washington after really being pushed the first two sets. They really responded, got their act together. I was impressed with Iowa. They've got some firepower. They blocked the ball extremely well. Too many service errors, and then in that last set, too many errors overall.
Yeah, Taylor Lewis was a great hitter for them, though, as was Callie Hoy and Reagan Coyle. But the night belongs to Washington. A win for the Huskies, Holly. Day one of the Pac-12 Big Ten Challenge in both matches. What stands out to you? Well, I think for Washington, they're so young as a team. They learn a lot about each other. I think this happened last week. Very slow start. The first match responded better the second match. And for Colorado, what impressed you? Even though they lost, what, did, what do they have to look forward to tomorrow? Well, Colorado, if they clean up their passing, they're right in it. That's the one thing that will make a huge difference in their game. We hope you'll join us again here. You can always go to the Pac-12 Now app. Pac-12 is a conference that is dedicated to volleyball. This is the first day of the 88 volleyball matches. Join us tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time. If you can't find us on Pac-12 Washington, go to your Pac-12 Now app. For my partner, Holly McPeak, our director, Lori Brooks, our producer, Steve Elkin, and our fantastic Pac-12 crew, I'm Anne-Marie Anderson. So long 